Hello there. Welcome to the Engineering Mechanics video lectures. So far we have seen the particles are moving in the translatory or rectilinear in motion. It means the object is moving in the straight line. That's maybe horizontal, maybe the vertical or maybe the inclined straight line. So this way the particle is moving and according to that we have developed the different types of equations and finally we found out that field parameters like displacement, velocity and accelerations we have calculated. Right? If a particle is not moving in the rectilinear motion but rather than it is moving in the curved path. So then how we are going to be find out those velocities, those accelerations how we can find out. So in this case the definition I am going to be talking over here the topic is curvilinear motion. That means a particle having a curvilinear motion. When the motion will going to become, the external force is going to be imparting on that. The definition, when a particle moves along a curved path, the particle moves along a curved path, then the motion said to be a curvilinear motion. That motion is said to be curvilinear motion. It means the particle is going to be consist of a curved path. It follows the curved path. So in this case, suppose we are going to be taking the particle is going to be may move in this direction. Can you see? I am going to consider this is going to be the particle P. So then what happened? It's going to be moving in the curved path. In towards this one, can you see? So there's going to be curvature is going to be there. So this one I am going to say R is going to be your radius of curvature. And from here another radius is going to be there that may also representing with rho is your radius of curvature. So then, then we can see like this. So the maybe sometimes it may maybe can go in this direction also. But it is not going to be moving in the straight line. So then we can say this motion is going to be a, a curvilinear motion. The same definition also we can tell. Then what will happen in this case the resultant of the applied force is acting in the curvilinear direction. So then we can say that motion also is going to be your curvilinear motion. Either in terms of the force or in terms of the path also we can define your curvilinear motions. There we can see and how we are going to be developing the velocity as well as the acceleration of that particular point. So in the next step we need to find out the velocity as well as the acceleration of that component. There we can see I am using first one is going to be your rectangular coordinate system. As we know that the rectangular coordinate system is consist of x as well as the y coordinate system we are using. So there we can see your one of the particle is moving from A to B. Right. So I have taken A and it is reaching to the B. So that means the particle is going to be moving in a curvilinear motion. Right. On a path it is moving that is going to be your the curvature is there. So then in this case what we are going to do we need to find out the the velocity of that. So then when it is going to be reaching to one point I am going to say this is your particle a P. So for this one I am going to be locating the position with respect to the ordinate. So that's I am going to be say here this distance I am going to be say R. From the origin of this rectangular uh, coordinate system that is located at R distance of that position P. So then what will happen? So then I am going to be taking the projection to the X axis and to the Y axis. So then can you see with respect to the X axis this is going to be the X distance it is located. Right? With respect to the Y I am taking the projections of this one I am going to be saying this is going to be existed Y distance. Can you see? The same R is going to be I have taken from the origin, right? Then I have split it into X axis as well as the Y axis. So then what will happen? The same R is going to be consist of your the two positions that's going to be X as well as the Y. So that's going to be your. So in this case, X is going to be the function of the time. And the P is going to be the uh, particle, suppose the particle located at R distance. 
Similarly, the rectangle coordinates I am going to be taking the x is going to be the function of the time. They are because here depends on the time. Similarly, y is going to be the function of the time. Right? If I am going to be taking the derivation of this one, what I am going to be getting? So that's going to be v x is equal to the velocity in the horizontal direction d x by d t. I can take it. Right? And similarly, d y. So in this case, what will happen? V y, the velocity in the y direction, is equal to d y by d t. So there we can see. By using this x, that means the rectangle coordinates, velocity in the x direction and the y direction, I have determined. So then, the resultant velocity we are going to see. Can you see the particle is not moving in the x-axis, not moving in the y-axis, but rather than it is moving in the curved path. So then, we need to find out the resultant velocity. Then, what is the formula for the resultant velocity? That's I am going to be taking the v is equal to the square root of v x square plus v y square and here the v is going to be your uh, the resultant component this is not moving in the x direction not in the y direction but rather than it is moving along this path in this direction the v i am going to be getting okay so once we are going to be calculating the velocity same way we are going to be calculating the acceleration also so what is the acceleration we do have that's going to be a x a x is equal to from this one we are going to be getting d square x by d t square and similarly in the y direction also i am going to be taking a y is equal to d square y by d t square can you see we have defined the acceleration of this particle in x direction is equal to d square x by d t square and similarly acceleration of the particle in y direction is equal to d square y by d t square then what is the resultant acceleration because it is not moving x and y so then the resultant acceleration a is equal to the square root of a x square plus a y square this way we are going to be calculating the the resultant acceleration right suppose it is reached to the point from this point to the another point so then i can say this is the v dash so then the variation of the velocities from point to point then automatically acceleration is going to be acceleration is nothing but the rate of change of velocity with respect to the time is going to be your acceleration this way i can calculate your the resultant acceleration as well as the resultant velocity right now we will see the uh, slope of that part so the slope i am going to be calculating that is going to be your tan theta is equal to suppose it is going to be making an angle theta so the tan theta is equal to vertical component of the velocity by horizontal component of the velocity by the ratio of the velocity in x direction of the particle divided by the velocity in the x direction of the particle so this way we are going to be calculating the uh, the slope of the particle so i hope you are able to understand how to calculate the velocity as well as that means the resultant velocity and the resultant acceleration from this the rectangular coordinate system so in the next session next video we will see how to calculate the normal acceleration or normal velocity tangential velocity as well as the tangential accelerations that we are going to be calculating i hope you are able to understand how to calculate the resultant velocity as well as the acceleration by using the rectangular coordinate system Thank you.